Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. Uh, one or two people wrote to me that uh, since I uh, switched to using my uh, Windows desktop for recording video, the fonts have become very, very small uh, to see, especially on smaller devices. So um, I still want to try to record in Windows because the recording software is just better. I uh, found out and easy to use it and it's actually part of my video editing software. So it's all one in one piece. Um, but what I'm doing is I'm making the screens quite a bit bigger and uh, hopefully that will make the important things easy to read. Today we're going to look at how to install um, MBS software and I always like to, when I have time like I did earlier today on the airplane, I go and uh, check out websites uh, um, that have very good interesting stuff on MBS. One of them is Jay Mosley's website, jmosley.com as you can see here. Um, he, there's always something new I discover there and uh, so while I was on the airplane I looked at some of this um, uh, miscellaneous programs he has on his website for MBT and also for MBS and I thought maybe I'll run for an installation uh, process for this for the software and uh, hopefully we can all learn something from it. I've, I've, I've never installed any of his uh, tools here from this page so I don't know how easy or hard it is so I'll just do it and if I fail, then I guess I'll make a fool out of myself uh, in front of all of you guys. Um, and if you succeed, I, I'll, I'm sure I'll help. Some, I'll learn something. I like math problems, so I like kind of like I, I really don't know what we're going to do today, but um, I like uh, math problems. And I saw this one kind of st stood out while I was watching this on my iPad today. It's an assembler, um, and uh, oh, but one thing I missed is actually this is for COBOL. I know really almost nothing about COBOL. I used to do very, very little COBOL programming in the early 80s, but uh, I remember nothing. Um, so maybe I'm thinking this is maybe not ideal because I wouldn't know how to test it with COBOL. This looks interesting, uh, date routines. That's always something that uh, we want to do, but that's just routines. I don't know if that is a complete, complete piece of software. They were written COBOL basically with Microsoft, um, Microsoft Assembler. Let's see what else. Comsort, this is for COBOL. Again, I, I wouldn't know how to test it. Input output field editing routines. I first started putting together this collection. Uh, see here, updated installation procedure. Okay, this looks interesting. Um, there's an installation procedure. Okay, this could be good. Uh, COBOL. Again, this is COBOL source. Nope. Um, translate buffer addresses. I'm not that interested in in screens and 3270s. Generate DDJCL standards for open like DASD. Yeah, this is interesting. That is a problem that now and then comes up when you do maintenance on your MBS. So, job stream. Okay, we could try this. Uh, the phone pros were not written by me, but lacking another system. Okay, so let's see what prime by uh, vSAM cluster. I know somebody was asking about uh, showing how to use vSAM, but this is, um, oh yeah, this is COBOL related again. Reset data set to empty. This is COBOL issue console commands on display mess and display messages are pretty five times. This is something that runs as a start task initially executed at IPL time. It automatically schedules itself to start every two hours or at the time of the next scheduled event. Okay, so what I was saying here is that this is kind of a schedule. So I prefer that. Um, just reading here what's on the web page, you're welcome to go visit it. Okay, there's a job stream to assemble and link edit the program plus install procedure and parameter member. This looks interesting. Program must be an authorized library. Oh, this is good exercise. This is APF stuff. And the job stream is set up. See? Okay. Okay, I understand. Dynamic load sub programs in COBOL. Again, COBOL is not my thing. Yeah, that is a problem that I sometimes have when I program an assembler. Retrieving the job card information. 
Uh, so I'm kind of tempted between the scheduler software and uh, between the schedule job software and the generate DD statements for JCL for online DASD, although this seems a little simple. This seems a little bit more substantial and I know that you guys uh, like to see more substantial problems being solved. So I think we're going to go with this. Um, so there's a job stream to assemble a linkated program. Okay, so let's just download this thing. And obviously that's very fast. Uh, and okay. Uh, well first problem is how do we open this in Windows? Um, well, I can always uh, send it to my Linux machine and unzip it there. Um, let me do this here. I'm, I have a Linux machine here next to me. Um, so, what is my IP address here? Okay. Um, Okay, so let's just uh, move this into, uh, what is this again, uh, command, and then uh, let's go in here, and oh, I don't have a putty in there. Um, okay, um, copy. Go into my MVS here and paste. Okay, now we have a PSCP and now do the PSCP minus L uh, root. Um, Where's my IP here? 51 and uh, let's see here what, uh, what, what directory. I can, well, let me, you know what, I'll just download it here on my Linux machine, and then we just have to copy it on zip, so that serves me one, uh, one step. Okay. Okay, so copying it over to my Linux machine, downloading it over. Okay, so and almost done. Okay. So now let me download it here. I just called it, I uh, unzipped it and okay. So that should be here now. And before we um, put it up to Before we put it on my uh, MVS system here, let's uh, open it in my uh, Windows editor. And so let's go in here. Let's go into the JCL directory. And okay, so I put in very large font. It should be re easily readable by most people now. If not, then I'm very sorry. I apologize. I made it bigger last time and next time. But uh, Okay, so let's see what we got here. Unfortunately, on Windows, I don't have, on this editor here, Notepad++, I don't have syntax highlighting for JCL or Assembler, but, so this is what I downloaded here. So there's a job card here, Assemble Link Z, Timer Utility to Sys2, 
linklib install catalog procedure in sys2 proclib install ztimer command member in sys2 control okay so what it does is it will assemble i guess it will contain some assembly source code within this because i don't see any other downloadable file and that goes it is a, it's assembled and linked into sys2 linklib Okay, and then uh, it installs a catalog procedure so we can start this job, the, the scheduler. The, this is kind of, I think what this is going to be kind of like the cron uh, scheduler in Linux. I don't know if Windows has a scheduler, I assume it does. Um, and so once to put the, the procedure to start the JCL for the timer into sys 2 proclip, which we do have in TK4. And then install the ZTimer command member in sys2 control, which is something I've never seen on TK4. And then here is it at the execution card. It runs the assembler with some parameters. It wants to use this library, which is fine. Um, uh, okay, and here is the assembler source code. That's fine. Um, Oh, this was last edited in December 2004, so it's about 13 years old. And this, I guess, must be... Um, yeah, I just... Yeah, that's what I thought. So all the modifications may be identified by the presence of the string JLM. And the modification modify the code to retrieve system identification from control blocks rather than scanning, scanning the SMF parameter every execution. That makes sense. The overhead save by limiting the file access is probably minimal, especially on the Hercules platform. Yeah. Okay, so this software is designed originally to read from all the parameters it needs from from the uh, SMF recorder data sets, but then uh, Jay mostly changed it to read from the uh, in memory control blocks. Okay, so uh, we can put this away for now. Um, and so let's check again what's happening here. Okay, here is a usage of a, of a uh, macro that I don't know. I know the prolog macro exists in some systems. Dollar, pro, dollar prolog, I don't really know. Get current time and date into character format. Check for leap year and adjust, evaluate. Okay, this is just get system time and date. This is where it starts. Uh, I guess so, the, so then I, must, I guess this prolog here sets up the base register and saves the registers that we received upon entry. And probably there's an AP log down here somewhere. This is all... Okay. Mm. I didn't see that below here. Should be here. AP log. AP log. Nope, I don't see it. Let's search. If there's a prolog, there should be a epilog. Oh yeah, okay, here it is. Yeah, yeah, it's here. All right, so um, so let's check again. So it opens up, um, reads the date, um, calculates leap years and does some calc a date conversion here, which is fine. Okay. Oh, it tries to find out the day of the week. That's good. Nice nifty routine here. Um, calculate next invocation of ZTimer. Two hours hence, the next event, whichever comes earlier, get system ID. Okay, so. Okay. So here it schedules itself for next execution. It finds out if we pass midnight, because then obviously, it, if it's. Yeah, then it does it at midnight. Uh, if it's same day, then it opens up SMF Parm lib member, member, but this has been combated out. Um, okay, so it doesn't use all of this. Instead, um, yeah, it accesses obviously the CVT, the common vector table, which is the mother of all entry, just the mother entry of all. Oh, through the CVT, that's how we access almost every control block in MBS. You always have to start with CVT. Um, and so put in the PSA, obviously, is also very important, the program save area. So it puts in, um, okay, is we base, base off CVT, and then we point to CVT. Um, 
then we will open an input file I guess this must be this what is it called the target for the parameter yeah so the parameter file okay so I understand so what this is probably kind of like the cron file on uh, Unix where you put in you know, what day you want things to run or what hour and it has something similar here and so it opens this file and reads this is a comment card so there's comments and then okay it tries to understand what's in the parameters that have been passed in the command um, okay all right again it needs to do the date conversions here was a system ID specified okay so this is a in case you're in a in a in a cluster like in a in a JS2 um, multi-access pool environment then you can say on which machine you want to execute it um, check time of execution time of action required okay was the time specified yeah it was in okay so there is command types and there is I guess non-command types um, add the second video compare okay it says right here okay so I duplicated the W code to provide both a high intensity and rollable message and regular intensity and rollable message for ZD select by okay so this is exactly here <laughs> we're by coincidence the same exact page this is what Jay added so even when it executes a command, issue command, it still tells us on the console that a command was executed. And if not, it's a display request. Display, uh, I guess it's this one, and display n, be display. Oh, okay, I got high intensity. So DSH is high intensity, meaning it, it shines extra bright on the console, and DSN is normal. Um, and then move to message to WTR. Um, okay. And here's the real interesting part issue command. That's where we jump for branch on equal. If it's a command request, it branches here. And then it says uh, move the command to a command area within the MVS uh, uh, control blocks. It sets the key to zero. It's kind of like switching to supervisor. Oh, actually, yeah, it switches to supervisor mode, like switching to kernel mode in, in Linux, and then mode supervisor. So, <laughs> and it says pretend we, we are MVS. Um, and then we issue the command and immediately switch back again to problem state because you don't want to stay in, in the supervisor state too long. Key zero because it's easy to create damage and bring the whole machine down. Okay, this is very simple, but very classic. And the fine handling that we close stuff, um, this is um, calculations and the constant data areas. Uh, I saw this one being referenced above, which means every two hours it wakes up. For Just for debugging, I'll change this to one for now. So we can see more frequent messages knowing that it works. Or maybe even 30 minutes, but well, let's say one hour. Um, okay, so then we have all the control blocks. So SMF we don't read anymore. We do, instead we use sysin, and I guess sysin is this uh, what's it called? Sys2 control. Okay. All right. So then is the linkage area. Once we finished assembling this, oh, okay, this was written by Mr. One Stephen Steve Stefan Newman. Systems programmer at Sun Alliance Insurance. I actually know this insurance. I think they were, if I'm not mistaken, in Portsmouth in the UK. And Zivon was a um, publication back in the 80s about mainframe stuff um, that most shops were subscribing to. So this is the linkage editor. And the only interesting thing here is that it sets the access code to one. So it makes this uh, authorized. And the name is going to be ZTimer. Um, and then there's an updatey. Uh, program step here. Uh, well, I see there's another program step called the IEB update. I don't like that. I don't like uh, multiple steps being called the same way because if they're bends and then instead you don't know what it is. So I'll call this update one. And if that's okay with you uh, people. I'll, and so then something goes wrong, I know what to call it. Um, so it, it, what it does, update it moves some stuff into sysprocglib 
and invoke um, okay and then this one uh, okay so what it does is it copies all of this this is actually not the JCL of this job it copies this JCL into a member in sys 2 proclib which is the procedure to start the timer oh, that's very nice okay so all this is not really part of this JCL this is a JCL that's being copied into this member created in proclib okay uh, maybe make this cage so we know what's going on uh, what was the Oh yeah, let's make this held as well, so we can look at it in the spool. Um, okay, so, and then create, oh, then it puts all of this into a member called Z-Timer, they all call Z-Timer, in sys to control But it assumes here that sys to control already exists, um, which I'm not sure it does here in our system. And it puts all of this into that member. Okay, so that's simple enough. So what we do is we'll start by uploading this to my MVS system. All right. So this is a brand new, just downloaded it uh, before we got started with this video here. Um, everything is as new as uh, login as Herc01 and log out and go out of the menu here and then send to host. Um, and then I'm gonna go to desktop and uh, MVS open JCL and Z timer. And then I'm gonna put it um, in Herb01 test ASM Z timer. Um, even though I know. This is actually not going to do as much good because we have some unresolved uh, issues with the um, with the uh, with this prolog and epilog macros, which I don't really understand what they do. I guess we could just do the you know saving the, the registers and point to save area and set up the base register ourselves, but maybe there's more done here. I haven't I haven't checked like real careful if there's any macros being used that could. So we need to go find out what these prologs are. Um, so let's do mostly MVS and what is it called? Pro dollar prolog and dollar epilog. Okay. Oh, so you call a handy little utility with a couple of durations on that. There were no changes required. He supplies a sound source code for plus three, okay, macros. Regs, prologue, and epilogue. Uh, so I guess we'll have to obtain that as well because we need those macros. And uh, frankly, I'll actually put the source code for the macros into, into this um, source code rather than doing all this uh, on the mainframe itself. It's a little, little cut and paste. So let me just, uh, since this is, I think, the, you know, so it's a gzip file. Yeah, let me download it on my Linux machine here and then we can copy it over again. Uh, okay. And in the meantime, I'll download this thing here. What is it called? GDG. Copy mostly. Just going on a browser and looking for it again over my Linux machine. Yep, got it. And downloading it. And now I'll have to gun zip it. Okay. And my IP here is. Okay. So let's do this again. Um, PSCP. And then uh, uh, G D G. Okay, so and let's open that as well and see what's in those macros. Um, okay, but this is a part of a job for something else. This is generation 
generation data group, it just needs these macros for this program. So we don't need this program, we only need the macros. Okay, here is a macro. Yeah, pregs, which we need, I guess, in here. Yeah, because we use R0 kind of, so. Um, you know, in, in assembly language, actually the register is just called zero, but to make it easy to recall, we write R0, but we need the equates to point to that, and that's what this regs here does. So I guess we'll take this. Um, and, well, this is actually part of this thing here. At names, part of updating. It's because there's an updating job here, I guess. Yeah. So we don't need all that. So let's just take everything and then remove the commands to IEB updating. Um, yeah, here's prologue. Um, we can see here the prologue macro. Okay. This macro provides standard linkage and base register specification for most members of the, I guess, CSS's chaining system support toolkit. The first one is a positional list of registers to be used as base. Okay. If you want to make it re entry, it obviously creates a, an additional dynamic storage. Uh, another addressable must be defined immediately prior to any desects. Okay, let's check if this is the case in our code later. Uh, and this is the macro for prologue. Okay, quite advanced. Uh, this is the get main that it does if you want the re entrant that we just mentioned above. Um, and this is epilogue. Okay. So let's get all of this up to ment. Ment means macro end. Let's copy this and let's just put it here at the very beginning. Just be very brute force approach. Um, let's just put it in here, let's say, before this thing. And now we have to go and remove all the commands to IEB updating, which, yeah, like this one, add. We don't need this. Okay. And I think there's two more because there's three macros. Uh, if you see it, shout. I wish we had syntax highlighting here, guys, but uh, we don't. Uh, okay, here is one. Uh, but then shoot me in one more. This needs to be in this position here. Oops. Um, okay. But there needs to be one more add. Where is it? Oh, why can't I find it? This regs. Oh, we didn't copy. Okay, so there's only two because we didn't copy here. We just copied just above add name. So let's just do. Oh, yeah, okay. That is part of our real job here. Okay, it's all good. So we can save this now. And now we have the macros to run our job, which was missing as downloaded from Mosley's website. By the way, Mosley is just an awesome person. He knows so much. I'm learning so much stuff from him. So now we can put this away and we can focus on, and we can, uh, upload it here, I guess. Uh, so, transfer, send to host, um, Z timer, and we call the Z timer here, and we're in. Let's go f check it out. Um, Eric01 test ASM, and should be only one member, yep. And it's there, and we have syntax highlighting, perfect. 
So I'll make this as big as I can because I think I'm going to spend most of the rest of this video on this member. I mean, inside MVS. Um, so uh, let's just have the documentation handy here. I oh, hope you can all read this okay. Um, and I want to go back to where I was. Is that possible? Yeah. Um, where is the issue command? Okay, so. So first thing is, so this looks good. Uh, obviously we want to change this to a Herc 01. Uh, call it Z for timer. I see that uppercase is installed. Let's do a renom because I saw that there were some line numbers uh, that we copied over from this GDG thing. Um, and um, now we should be good. Let's save it. Assemble into Systo linklet. Now, okay, so one of the things now, let's start the second session here is uh, I don't know if Systo Linklib is an APF authorized library because to become, to switch into kernel and supervisor state, you need to be APF authorized, which is APF authorization in MVS is kind of like being root in Unix, like when you get allowed to do everything. And Systo Linklib, I don't think that's APF authorized. How can we find out? Well, there's two, two easy ways to do that. Say, let's get out of here. The easiest and most comparable would be to use the IMON uh, monitor by Greg Price. And if you go in there, you have, um, what is it called here? Address space monitor, uh, system library display. So let's go into L. And here you see, yeah. And here you see authorized library names. These are APF li uh, authorized libraries, meaning that uh, compiled binary modules, load modules that are in this libraries, when they execute, they can become, they're authorized to become supervisor. You still, to have, you still need to have the instruction, the assembly instruction to switch into supervisor state. But if you are in this libraries, then you're assumed uh, that you're authorized. And obviously you would have to protect these libraries very well, so that nobody writes stuff into it, because once you write an assembly program that is allowed to switch, um, you, you know, all kind of bad stuff could happen if people have malicious intent or even without malicious intent. So sys, sys1 linklet is authorized, sys1 vitam lib is, and I don't know what this is, but sys2 is not, okay? That's one place where we can find out. The other place is by going in the configuration fly, file for that. So sys1 arm lib contains all the important configuration so and this member here ieaapf 0 which stands for APF authorization they you put in the libraries that are APF authorized and at IPL time this is being read and then the nucleus makes those the supervisor makes those um, authorized I guess somewhere else we also have link lips is one link lib being added um, don't know where exactly but we just saw in IMON that linklib is and sys2 is not, because we also have uh, sys2 linklib, um, but uh, stuff that is in here is not APF authorized. And I guess Jurgen, the author of TK4, split it this way so that link, sys1 linklib would be authorized and sys2 is all the stuff that doesn't need to be authorized. But since our um, software needs to be authorized obviously to switch into supervisor state then we need to put it in sys1 not in sys2 and then the other thing is it wants to put the procedure in sys2 proc lib uh, which exists uh, okay here we have all the user uh, procedures for fortran algol cobol here database start what is this okay um, fourth GCC and I guess ours would be then uh, have, uh, ours would be at the very end here Z timer so okay so um, let's go back into this so we need to change all the <coughs> mentions of <coughs> of uh, sys1 link lib of uh, sys2 link lib Okay, so let's change it here. And we can leave sys2 proclib, sys2 control. Um, let's 
Um, so sys2 control does not exist, I'm pretty sure. So let's switch into uh, sys2 control. Obviously it doesn't exist. So we would have to create this and I'm assuming it's going to be fixed block 80 uh, record length. So let's do this. Um, 3.2 create allocate new data set. Let's call it sys2 control. Obviously we need the uh, emphasis before and after, otherwise it would append the high level qualifier of herc one to the front of it. Um, so let's make this fixed block 80. Um, I'm gonna be wasteful here. And um, we'll make it uh, five tracks and 10 directory blocks. Okay, so this is allocated. Let's switch back here. And so let's uh, prepare to have this execute now. I'm not happy where, it, okay, so this is not fixed. Um, also, install Z timer. I need more, more job car parameters. Um, I want message level. And I want region to be not more than four megabyte. It should be more than ample. Um, okay, the problem provides a reminder. Let's leave this. Um, let's find all occurrences of sys2. Okay, so we put this in sys1 link lib instead. Um, Okay, I changed this to IB update one and two, so in case of problems, we can keep this apart. Uh, sys2 proclib, the procedure goes into sys2 proclib. The um, parameter file will go into sys2 control, which is fine, and, and then puts this in. Okay, I think I'm ready to run this. Uh, you I know some of you must be dying to see how many million error messages I get. So let's be ready and let's execute this. Keep an eye here on the on this uh, file so we can see when it starts to run. Yep, and it's done already. So let's look at the damage. 3.8. Uh, whoa. Wow. That was easy. Um, no return codes above zero. Wow, I did not expect that. <laughs> um, let's see the compilation. Huh. Um, sorry, I pressed stop by accident. So this is the assembler. Um, okay, so let's do here right. 15, that's a little easier to read. Okay, so start the assembly here. Uh, everything seems to have gone well. Uh, why don't I see? Oh, here I see it. So here's the the hex representation of the binary. Uh, so that seemed to have compiled without any errors, which is great. Um, so it recognized obviously the prologue. Um, we could expand the macro so we could see what it is, but uh, since this went well apparently. Um, so this is low, looks good. Uh, we changed the hours to one hour. That's good. And well, I'm more interested now in the linkage editor phase um, because okay, linkage editor. Um, okay.
Well, this looks good. It accepted set code AC1, accepted the name. Total length is 6B8. It does not exist, but has been added to their data set. So we should be able to go to Sys1 LinkedIn now and see it, see it there. Um, I'm not mistaken. Yeah, so let's just switch, uh, save this since it's good. Um, let's go and let's see Sys1 link clip. Let's go to the bottom and there it is. Wow, we managed to install it. That was easy. I imagine a little bit more trouble here. Let's browse this. Compiled. Yeah, this looks good. Now let's go to uh, proc sys2 proclib. There should be a procedure there at the very bottom called Z timer. And there it is. Um, Okay, south. I uh, didn't know you could write just write sys out equals h, but let's say it's true. Um, and sys2 control should also have a member now called z timer. That will call z timer. Yep, there it is. And so if I look at the, the um, let's go to the console here. Let's issue d time. It shows right now that it's always like, I guess this is a European time or something, 2143. So let's just put in here a new record. Uh, actually, let's copy one. Uh, 21, it's 2143 right now, so let's put 2145. Uh, and let's make it DSN. So hello, Moshix, and YouTube. Okay, let's save this quickly before it turns to, oh, and maybe we have to get out so there's no sharing problem. And then let's just start it, S, Z, timer. And it, and it started. So now we'd have to wait maybe a minute or so to see if a message comes out of here. Z, timer. Uh, I don't know if you managed to read this uh, control. So I, I'm going to change the, the assembly here a little bit so it gives us confirmation that it read the cards and they look okay there was no problems and if i understand what it does this it executes at this time so you need to put in here every time you want to put it in you can put in a date but you cannot say every five minutes as far as i can understand this comment card okay so you can put in the day of the week you can say all, so it executes every day at that time, but what you cannot say is like every five minutes. You would literally have to put an every five minutes thing in there. So, um, it's almost 45, so it shouldn't execute any second now. Um, but um, there's no every five minutes, or, oh, here it is. Hello, Moshix and YouTube. <laughs> so it worked. This was actually much easier than I thought. And I'm gonna make a change so we can put in the future. I can put in, if this column is nine. As far as I can see, nine is not occupied. And so we'll put in here one more thing, which is um, column nine uh, means every. Minutes, uh, hours. minutes you follow what I'm saying that shouldn't be too difficult to do uh, once I get this uh, fix in um, I'll upload the new source so you can play with it but uh, it should be truly for everybody I don't think we need to waste any more time on explaining how to do this I mean, if you really want to know I can show you where it will go in um, just uh, as a quick where it reads the cards here um, Yeah, so in here we put in um, one more called every, 
and then check for column 9 if there is let's say a Y for every or an E for every then we branch to a section and then we reschedule here um, this where it reschedules itself um, It will go in here, I guess. Uh, Okay, here. Um, okay, top. Okay, here is where. Yeah, in this section. So that's where we put it in. Um, and uh, time for next execution. So. Um, so then we will put in, have to put it in every uh, whatever we read from the next uh, five bytes. So that's really simple enough. Um, maybe we'll also put in here a comment that the card has been correctly read. Uh, where is the. Yeah, here. Uh, we could put in one here just after this instruction. Um, something like this. One card is read correctly. Uh, and we could also put in here one at the end that all cards have been read correctly. So something like that. Um, so this is fun. I hope you had uh, fun watching uh, 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 this. Uh, we basically took a piece of source code that we saw from 87. So that's now 30 years old and made it work for our, well, 30, 35 year old operating system. And uh, this is how you install software, this is how you make things work, and this is a little bit of system programming at the basic level. Thank you very much for watching. Please do subscribe to my channel to see future videos, and, and I hope to see you soon on this channel. Thank you, goodbye.